So let's talk about array prototype sum, one of the less commonly used methods, but a very important one nonetheless. Now, array sum is a method that exists obviously on our array prototype, and it was introduced in ECMAScript version 5 and is now supported in all modern browsers. Array sum tells you whether any element in our array passes a particular test. So, for instance, if one of our values passes a particular test, array sum is then going to give us a true return value. Now, if no elements pass our test, array sum is going to return false because as soon as sum finds a true result, it then short circuits the loop and will continue no more. And this also gives us a nice performance boost as it won't keep iterating and iterating if it finds a true value. Now, you can think of array sum as I want to check if any of my values in my array meet a specific condition. And all you do is get back a yes or no answer from array sum. So we're given a Boolean, a true or a false. Either none of these values or at least one of these values and some of these values pass a particular test. So underneath our array, let's just quickly explore the syntax. If we used array sum and have a look at the function definition, you can see that we have this callback function, much like the other array prototype methods, which gives us a value, it gives us an index, and it also gives us the array that we are then iterating. And we can, like many other array methods, we can change that this context. So if we were to go ahead and start using sum, we would take that value, we would take the index, we would also be given the array. It's up to us to then go ahead and perform some logic inside of this callback where we want to provide a test against each array element. And we'll do that momentarily. But we can also change the this argument should we wish to pass another object reference perhaps, which will then change the internal value of this inside the function. However, it won't work with an arrow function like we're using. So if you do need to do that, you'll need to use the full function keyword like so. So back to talking about array sums return value. Here we're going to get a return value. And what this will be is either true or flat out false. They are the only two values you can ever get from sum. So now we've looked at the syntax, let's just have a look at a more simple example. So let's create an array with one, two, and three, and we're going to say dot sum. Now what we're going to say is give me X, and if X is greater than one, that is simply going to be our test. So what's gonna happen here? You can think of these methods as they start off with some kind of for each. We're going to loop over each of our array items and then make our test. So this is our test in the callback. All our test is, is that are any of these items in my array greater than the number one. So here we have one, which is not greater than the number one. However, our number two and three are greater than one. So some here will go, ah, I see that number two is actually greater than one. So I'm going to short circuit the loop. And in our constant where we can say greater than one, we can go ahead and log it out. And we should see a true value on the right in our console. If for example, we said x is less than one, we then get false because none of these values are below the number of one. Now to demonstrate array sum in this example, what I'm gonna do is add a new property to our objects. So here after our price, I'm gonna create this promo and we're gonna create some true values in sight. However, they're not all going to be true. We're just going to create two which are false and one of them is going to be true. So here we're gonna say that our drink is definitely in the promo and all other items are not in the promo. How could we go about detecting this in our application? Let's go ahead and use array find to check if any of our items are in the promo and we should expect to then see our drink trigger array sum to return true. So underneath our code here, let's go down. We can say const, is in the promo because we want a yes, no answer is any of these items in the promo. And what we can simply say is items.sum, we get the item and just return me the item.promo. Now above when we were doing comparisons, this will result to a Boolean. I'm just declaring promo as true or false. So I'm actually providing those Boolean values right out of the gate. 
which means that our is in promo can be console logged and we can now have a true example because we do have one item in the promo. If we flick this to false, we then get false as the entire return value to array sum because it's not in the promo. So you may be thinking, ah, oh, this is really nice and I kind of like the idea behind it, but what about more of a real world use case? Let's say that you've just walked into a shop and you have a burger and some fries and they say, oh, if you buy a drink, which is in the promotion, you'll actually get all of this for just $6 instead of 399, 199, 299 added together, which is 897. So we save a few dollars in this instance. The way that we could do this is adding a constant of total. We can then use our is in promo with a ternary statement. So here we can create our ternary. We're going to say, if it's in the promo, then we want to run this bit of code, which means that we'll provide the total price for the meal as just 600. Otherwise, we're going to go and calculate all of those individual items and just add them up as if they weren't in the promo. So this is where, now that we've learned about array reduce, we can say array reduce, give me that previous, give me the next value, and we're going to add the previous value to the next dot price, and don't forget to add a zero for the initial value so that previous is zero on the first iteration, and we can start to calculate the full price of the total based on the next price. So let's log out our total, we'll replace our console log, and now you can see that we have 600 as the total cost. Let's assume that we do not buy the drink or add it to cart, for example, or it's no longer in the promo. When we hit save, our array sum logic is returning false, which means that we're not using the 600 for the flat fee of whatever the meal deal perhaps would be. And then we go ahead and calculate that final total based off of the items that the user has added. So I hope you really enjoyed that. I actually like array sum very much and I think it's a very good tool that goes nicely with many other array prototype methods. Now, as with all these videos, I'm going to show you the way to approach array sum without using array sum. So if there's some bits that you may not understand and I find these particularly helpful is when we look at more of the theory and how things work behind the scenes rather than just assuming that array sums going to do the right job for me every single time. So let's go ahead and say is in promo, we're going to create a let statement because we're going to set an initial value of false because we want to assume that all of our items do not meet our criteria. And if any of those items do, we will change this is in promo to true. And that's why we're using a let statement so we could rebind that value. So let's go and create a typical let statement inside our loop. We can say items.length and finally increment those values. Now inside of the loop, we will get a reference to our items. We can pass in our index to get each individual item and save it as part of a constant. Now the real logic here is similar to what we're doing in here. This is technically an if statement. So this means that we can say if the item.promo and that's any item. So any item in our array that we're currently looping through, if it has that promo prop, what do we need to do? We need to set is in promo simply to true. And at this point, to mimic the behavior, we would then break the loop. So let's have a quick save and you can see that we have this 600. If we were to go and change our promo back to false, we then have 897. So here we've successfully mimicked the full behavior of array sum by using a traditional for loop as well. And there's lots that we've now covered in this video. What I'll do is just bump this back so you've got the real way that we can use these modern APIs to develop with.